run by a group of trustees who are volunteers from the community. And essentially what we do is we're able to receive donations, uh, large and small, uh, from folks in the community, and we do some fundraising, and then we take those funds and we, uh, through a system of grants and scholarships, um, devote them to community-oriented activities in the areas of recreation, facilities, uh, the arts, and programs like the one you're here uh, for today. The foundation has been around since 1994, and since that time we've given away over half a million dollars to various community uh, projects and events. Thank you. So if you know of any uh, community-worthy uh, project, uh, you can come see us. We have a website you can look at. And uh, what else can you do? As I said, we take donations large and small. So if you're looking for uh, somewhere to make a donation, the foundation uh, is an excellent place, and we'd be happy to talk to you. And then on the small scale, if you'd like to, we have our treasure chest here today. And the small donations that you give us allow us to keep bringing you programs like this one that you're here for today. One last important announcement. Pirates are still ahead, six to one, in the top of the seventh. And uh, our all-star Andy McCutcheon has a home run. <laughs> and what I'd like, now like to do is, uh, I want to extend a special thanks to Dean and to Jim um, and all the members of Community Band South for uh, all that they do and all that they bring to us. Uh, and uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful uh, opportunity for all of us to enjoy music as we do here today. So let's welcome them back with a warm round of applause. Thank you.
our favorite, one of our favorite Marsh conduct, uh, composers, uh, Henry Fillmore, uh, a seventh cousin to Millard Fillmore, Fillmore cousin. But anyway, that has nothing to do with it. But it's an interesting, interesting thing. This fellow has written this on this piece of music on the score. It says written by Will Huff, but we all know it's Henry Fillmore, because he, because he. I have no clue. Because <laughs> he. I can't pronounce the name. It's Tolson Shuchin March.
Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> How many directors did they take to test the sound system? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, we're gonna uh, finish my part of the program with a Leroy Anderson portrait. It has most of the uh, pieces that you know by the Boston Pops that they were asking about. Um, let's see if I can remember what they are. We'll, we'll, we'll finish what the Jews Hall they have. But you'll you'll see the baby fall on the tango and uh what's the Saranata. Saranata. Okay. Okay. Saranata. Saranata. Okay. I'm glad they know what they're doing. <laughs> and so I said somebody said, you couldn't be joined, so I just fall over. You know they do either. So I hope you like this. Leave right hand and support. Thank you, Jim. I have to get out in the middle of the room. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a forty bit.
you at this concert two years ago? Any of you attend this particular concert with Community Band two years ago? How about a year ago? Well, a year ago and two years ago, I said to you, after we had just played a piece called American River Songs, there is a poltergeist. <laughs> and it's in this microphone. After we played a piece of music called American River Songs by a composer named Pierre Leplant, that we had commissioned Pierre Leplant to write a piece for us. And we thought it was going to be a march, three minutes. We uh, set a price, and Dean and I did some research because we wanted a piece of music about Pittsburgh. And so we went to the Boston Memorial, and we went to the Steel Museum for an exhibit in the Homestead, and we sent all this information to Pierre Leplant. And Pierre Leplant took his little time, did some research, did a lot of it in the Westmoreland Museum, and found some folk songs, not folk songs like Joe Biden or, or the you know, countryman, but folk songs of original ethnic music of people who came to Pittsburgh to work in the mills and work in the mines. And a piece is called Pittsburgh Sweet. And if you'll indulge me, because we really like the piece, I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. It's not a three minute march. It's an 11 minute composition with about six different tunes. And Pierre wrote notes that said most of the songs on which this suite is based were written during the heyday of southwestern Pennsylvania's great industrial period that spanned the 1850s through the mid-20th century. The titles alone, the time and place, give one sense of struggles, stages, and times of character of the people who worked in the mills and mines. Now, this is what he wrote about the pieces that he selected. Evidently, there was a folk tune dedicated to a 20-inch mill. Now, a 20-inch mill in the steelworks was a mill that could produce huge eye beams that were used in constructing skyscrapers in Chicago and in New York City. Uh, that's the first piece. The second piece is called I'm a Labor Man. And if you've ever seen the Tamarizans, they could dance to this piece in Slovakia. Uh, the third piece is called Hard Times, and it is a Stephen Foster piece. It, it is a lot like the genie with his light brown hair, and you will hear that in that piece. After that comes a love song about where the Allegheny flows, and about a man who was leaving the work in the middle of leaving his wife or his friend behind at home, and she was lamenting. And that is played by the solo by our English horn player. And uh, Dean said that our other player was a prima donna. Well, the same player is a heck of an English horn player, and she will play it for you. And I believe you'll enjoy it. Where the Allegheny Blows. Um, next piece we will select is called I'm a Celebrated Working Man. And of course, all these were sung in their original native tongue, so I can't tell you what it says. The next piece after that is called In Soho on Saturday Night. Now, I don't know if any of you are Pittsburgh historians, but the Soho section of Pittsburgh is right around where both ice hockey places are right now, the Civic Arena and uh, our new arena. That was Soho. The police didn't want to go there, particularly on Saturday night. Uh, and one of the verses go, they tell us in Soho on Saturday night, most every person you meet there are tight. The men with their bottles, their wives with a can, and young girls go pounding around like a man. I like the third verse. It starts out, isn't it queer how some women drink beer in Pittsburgh on Saturday night? <laughs> so we hope you enjoy the Pittsburgh Sweet by Taylor McCann. Two years in the making.
Poltergeist.
So maybe it had to go to New Maybe it had to go to New Orleans to have heard that in church today. I'm not sure. Anyhow, we're down to our final piece. Of course, it's going to it's going to be a Sousa march, but not the one you think it's going to be. It's one that's one of his just best marches that he ever wrote. And with the exception of the title, it may have been become America's March instead of Stars and Stripes. But this was written at the end of the Second World War when people were thinking about these things. John Philip Sousa's Bullets and Bayonets.
this is Nancy Meyer and I'm a resident of Bethel Park. Did you know that our wonderful community is 125 years old this year? Well, it is. And we're searching for that person who has lived here longer than anyone else. We have lots of activities going on over the next few months and we'd like to honor that special person who has lived here continuously for the longest period of time. Just come up to the library and look for the flowered box on the circulation desk. Give us your name, the date you moved here, and your contact information. You can nominate yourself or nominate someone that you know. I'll be calling you to let you know how we will honor you as our very special resident. And please watch for information about all the other special activities that are going to be coming up in our community over the next few months to celebrate our 125th anniversary. In 1776, the Reverend John McMillan established two divisions of his congregation, the Eastern Division being called Lebanon and the Western Division being called Bethel. Bethel was incorporated in 1886 as Bethel Township, rich in agricultural and farmland, and by the start of the 20th century, Bethel grew as a result of advances in railroads and transportation. Pittsburgh Terminal Coal Company built Bethel's first coal mine in Molinar in 1902. And in 1921, a model mining housing community was built in Coverdale. Pittsburgh Railway's trolley system provided transportation through the 1920s and 30s, and currently Port Authority of Allegheny County's light rail system that runs through Bethel Park and the South Hills has become a major mode of transportation. In 1949, due to enormous growth, Bethel Township was named Bethel Borough as a borough form of government and by the 1970s had grown with residential development and commercial businesses to become a home rule municipality known as Bethel Park. With the 2010 census reporting the population as 32,313 residents, the municipality of Bethel Park remains one of the largest populated suburbs in the South Hills. Now therefore, be it resolved that I, Clifford Morton, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of Bethel Park, and on behalf of the Bethel Park Municipal Council, do hereby proclaim this day, June 7, 2011, to be known as the 125th birthday celebration of the municipality of Bethel Park in honor of all citizens and elected officials both past and present. Hey, uh, you ready? Of course I am. What are you waiting for? I was waiting for you. So we're gonna continue the puppy thing real quick. Okay, places everyone. In a minute! Do I have to do everything myself? You can't do it all by yourself. Um, I have to say that... Sure I can, I... No, he can't. And neither can I. So why don't you come on down to BPTV and help us make some of the great community programs you see on this station every day. Yeah! I mean, we can help you make your TV show ideas a reality. It's pretty awesome. So, come on down. I mean, I am pretty good. But I'm sure I can use your help. The American Legion, we're a powerful force for the nation. We pledge ourselves to our veterans, our youth, a strong national defense, and Americanism. These four pillars shape our work 
and what we do for America. We work relentlessly within our four pillars of service, and we succeed. We're committed to making sure all veterans receive the benefits they deserve for the sacrifices they've made in service to America. We support and promote citizenship and integrity in America's future leaders. We know what policies, tools, and manpower our military needs to protect this great country. We fight to get these things done. We're patriots through and through. We promote and defend these values every day in communities across the nation. Go to legion.org to find out more about the American Legion's commitment of service to America. There comes a time in life when you need government information. And you just don't know which way to turn. Well, there's a place you can go to put an end to your frustration. It's a site that everyone should learn. USA.gov. Find your social security benefits online. USA.gov. Our list of jobs will put you on cloud nine. USA.gov. Shop auctions for a used minivan anytime. USA.gov. You can apply for a student loan. USA.gov. Get energy saving tips for your home. USA.gov. So great, you might just get carpal tunnel syndrome. It's government made easy. For the people, USA.gov. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For the people, USA.gov. Yeah, yeah. Everyone is a story. Everyone. He passed away last year. It was hard at first when we found out how sick he was. The doctor suggested hospice care at home. He came home, and that was wonderful. And the hospice helped a great deal. They were there whenever we needed them. They helped me take care of him. I didn't know. I didn't know where to start, what to do, what his needs were going to be. As the illness got worse and worse, they were there with help and suggestions and, and just how to do it, how to cope with it. They made his last months comfortable, pain-free, which was a blessing. We were able to find some joy till the very end. you guys were cleaning out here. Oh, we are. We're uh, sweeping. Yeah, for space aliens. Yeah, for space aliens. Well, good luck with that. Imagine what a little time can do for your family. I think our work is done. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Kenny, the mabung ga jang. Bujuk Maria ma, dah hamun gunyo wah. Nyata fahat sebeli gejue. And now another adventure with Savings Man. 
Let's live at the beach. Let's golf every day. How about a trip? Season baseball tickets? Sounds like you're planning for retirement. Hey, savings man. Are you saving enough? We are. Thanks to the easy ballpark estimate worksheet at choosetosave.org. Hope you're saving for health insurance. Absolutely, because health insurance is important. Thanks, savings man. No, thank you. So visit choosetosave.org and get your ballpark estimate today. And now, another adventure with Savings Man. And with 0% down, all you have to pay on this mortgage is the interest. Now that's affordable. Are you sure? Savings Man. Watch out, you two. This is not your typical mortgage guy. He's really a subprime mate. Out you go. Monkeying around with the wrong mortgage can destroy your dreams. You're right, Savings Man. Remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. For more tips and tools, visit choosetosave.org today. Who's lived most everywhere From Zanzibar to Barclay Square But Patty's only seen the sights A girl can see from Brooklyn Heights What a crazy pair Kath, have you heard from Patty and Richard yet? Yes! Patty was going to stop and pick up a pie and Richard was going to file for Medicare. Filing for Medicare? <laughs> we won't eat till midnight, tomorrow. Richard's filing for Medicare online at socialsecurity.gov. It takes less than 10 minutes. 10 minutes? I had to go to the office and wait. Online. What about the paperwork? Online. Uh, but Richard's still working. Online. Hey. You made it. No problem, Papo. I got the pie. And I got my Medicare. And I've got the turkey. Did you get that online too? I am Joan Rivers with an important announcement. Getting old is horrible, okay? Horrible. You're not old. I mean, you're I'm older, old. but you're not old. You want to see old. Oh, God. Yes. Grow up, for goodness sakes. The last man to hit on me was an undertaker. I know where you I know, I, I don't want to talk about that. Well, tomorrow. you're going to have to talk about it. It's the future. It's coming right at us. And I'm not worried about dying. It, it's getting there. I mean, heaven is going to be fabulous. It's going to be a giant shopping mall, and there's going to be 20% off on everything, except for me, 44. You know, you're doing jokes, and yes. I'm just not ready. Well, you have to be ready. You have to listen to me. Look. There are things to discuss. They're going to be my needs. They're going to be my wants. Uh, you know, Mom, I, I just, I don't want to hear this. Okay. I just don't want to hear this. La, 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 la. Don't give me la, no, la, no, la, no, la, no. la, la, la. I don't, I can't. Talk I can't do this. to your family about uh -uh. aging, even no. if they're not ready to listen. Mm -mm. Come on, listen to me. Listen to me. For the first time? Yes, for the first time. No matter who you are, it's not easy talking about aging. For help, go to voa.org slash talk. A message from Volunteers of America. My little brother is thinking about retiring. I went to socialsecurity.gov to get a retirement benefit estimate. It was so easy. When it's time to retire, you can file online. I knew that. They grow up so fast.